Hi, welcome to the Maxwell Application Suite video series brought to you by Maven Asset Management. In this video, we will walk through creating a schedule in the Graphical Scheduler application. Let's navigate to the Planning and Scheduling option on our menu and then go to Graphical Scheduling. So we're going to create a new schedule. So we'll start by clicking on the new schedule and then we'll name our schedule. Then you can add a description. And I named mine the five week schedule. So we're gonna leave work selected. Our, op our options are asset, location, or work. So we've got work selected. Next, we'll look at rolling schedule. So you can set your schedule up so that the dates automatically change each week for you, or you can manually change them. For this example, we're just gonna manually change our dates. So next, we will select our calendar. I'll select day calendar. And then same thing for our shifts. I'm gonna select a day, evening, and night shifts. Another option is if you only want to look at your parent level work orders, you can select the top level work orders only. I'm going to leave it unselected for now. So we'll pick our dates. So I'm doing a five week schedule so that I can look at last week, the current week, and three weeks in advance. So I'm going to go pick the 24th to be my start and set my start time at 12 a.m. Click OK, and then I'll go five weeks out. So that is a 27th, change my end time. And you can set these dates and times for whatever works for your scenario. We can also restrict the work that comes into our schedule for dates that fall within this window. So a work order that has a report date, a target date, or a schedule date. So I'm gonna go ahead and check that. Then next, I'm going to add a query. So I'm adding a query so that we can tell the system we want to see certain statuses or certain types of work orders or things like that. If you have a saved query in work order tracking, you can bring that in by using the copy feature, but I'm just going to create my own. And I have one saved, so I'm going to copy it in there. Name my query. I'm just going to do weekly schedule. And you can add a longer description to that if you'd like to, but it's not required. So now if we go over to the more information tab, this is some just more settings you can use. So you can see it brings over our first day of the week is Monday. It shows shifts right now. That's based on the resource view when we go into scheduler. But the main thing I want to point out is the 14 days in the past the offset and in the future. So what does that mean? It's loading our resources for 14 days before our first day of the schedule and 14 days after the last day. So it's not taxing the system by loading resource availability for way in the past or way in the future that we're not interested in at the moment. So I'm going to go ahead and save our schedule. And then we'll go take a look at it in the graphical view. So I clicked on the graphical view tab and it's loading all our data. So once it loads, we see the four quadrants of our schedule. So we've got our work order data, our resource data, our timeline once we bring some work over into view and our resource availability. So we can adjust what we're seeing by grabbing this bar and just dragging it. And we see that our timeline always also moves. We can drag these down so that we can see more work orders. And since we only have two resources down at the bottom, we can make it drag it down even further. You see a row count. So this is telling you how many rows have come into your schedule. Now we looked, we talked about our parent child. So if you bring the task work orders in, you will see them expanded like this. So this is a parent work order. We can close that up and you can see that they just collapse. So if you don't bring the task work orders in, you won't see this arrow here that you can expand 
and collapse. So you can see the different columns that you can bring in. You can do things to make it easier to read by dragging the columns over a little so you at least have that line to kind of line up with. So next we'll sort our data in ascending order and you can see it pop up over here. So there's a lots of different things that we're seeing on the screen. We're seeing the description, we're seeing some diamonds, so that just means we don't have hours on our work order. We don't have an end date here. If we scroll down a little, and then if I right click and zoom to work, it'll bring some work into view. So you can see it's kind of jumbled up down here in our resource view. So if I just click on the month of April, that's gonna expand it anymore so we're seeing our availability down here there's different settings we can set I'm going to go to daily and we'll see that open up a little more it makes it a little more readable and I can even bring it down closer into a week time frame so now it's a little bit easier to read I can go back and forth I can scroll up here to bring my week into play so this is just the beginning of my week, this red line here, and I can see the different work orders. So whether they're task, if I shrink that up, then I'm just looking at the parent level. So this one's a good example. I've got my parent work order and then the task below it. And down here in our resource availability, I can see the overall availability of my craft when we're in scheduler, we're only looking at the craft level. And then I can see work that I already have scheduled for those days. And as we bring more work into the day, these numbers would change. So that's basically how we create a schedule. In a later video, we'll talk about how we can change the columns that we're seeing, move those columns around and make more adjustments on our screen. So thank you for watching this video.